This is our third and final video covering the alternate version of problem 1-7 focused on our statement of cash flow. We have previously analyzed Graham Company's made transactions to understand the impact of the accounting equation. We also prepared the first three of four financial statements, the income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet. And now we're on our fourth and final financial statement, the statement of cash flow. Our statement of cash flow has something in common with our income statement and statement of retained earnings and that it also covers a period of time. So for Graham Company, that's for the month ended May 31st. The goal is to explain the change in cash from the beginning of that period, which would be May 1st, to the end of that period, which would be May 31st. For convenience sake, I went ahead and included a portion of our accounting equation and since the statement of cash flow is focused on the cash impact of transactions, the only thing I'm concerned with is the cash column. Those are the transactions that had any cash impact. And just for convenience sake, so I don't have to rely, neither of us has to rely on memory, I included a quick notation to the side of what these transactions are related to. For example, on May the 1st, when they received $44,000 of cash, that was in exchange for common stock for Gabby Graham. On May the 1st, later on, when they paid out $2,300 in cash, that was related to paying rent, again, for convenience sake. Now, the beginning balance on May the 1st would be zero. So keep in mind, this is before any transaction occurred. The company just started, so it had no cash. When we accumulate all the impact of all the transactions in May, the resulting balance in cash for at the end of May 31st should be $47,120. Now you may say, well, that was really easy. I'm done with the statement of cash flow. That was the easiest statement. But you know, we got to complicate things a little bit more. We want to break down that change in cash by its three major activities, operating, investing, and financing. Ultimately, we want to understand the cash impact individually of these three activities. Think of operating activities as those normal day-to-day -day things that any business does as part of providing its product or service to its customers. So it includes things like receiving cash from its customers, paying a variety of vendor suppliers, whether it's for supplies, for inventory, paying its employees, paying utilities, those types of normal day-to-day -day things. We can look at it another way and say it's the cash impact of any transactions that ultimately affect the income statement at some point. Now, one of the first things we're going to take a look at is cash received from customers. And if you recall, we have a few different instances, so I'm just going to grab my highlighter to make it a little bit easier to follow along with. On May the 8th, Graham Company received $5,300 in exchange immediately for consulting services. Then again, on the May 20th, they received $2,700. Now, if you recall, the consulting services were done earlier in the month, but we don't care from the statement of cash flow perspective. We just care when the cash is being collected and it was being collected on the 20th. Also, again, on the 25th, Graham Company received $3,900. Again, I believe that the services were done on the 22nd. We're not concerned about that. We're just concerned that they collected the outstanding accounts receivable on the 25th of $3,900. Again, an additional amount received from the customer. So if we add all these amounts together, the $5,300 on the 8th, $2,700 on the 20th, and $3,900 on the 25th, total cash received from customers is $11,900. We also have several outflows related to our normal day-to-day -day activities. For example, cash paid for rent. Now you'll notice we show this as a negative amount in brackets because Graham Company is paying out $2,300. It's an outflow of cash. Cleaning, cash paid for cleaning is $800. Again, reflected as a negative. We're going to skip salaries for now and come back to it. But telephone, cash paid for telephone is a negative $300 or an outflow of $300. And cash paid for utilities, again, an outflow of $260. Let me get rid of my earlier highlights. Cash paid to our employees in the form of salaries. On the 15th, we paid out $730. On the 28th, we again paid out $730. So total cash paid to employees is an outflow of $1,460. Net all these against each other, inflow of $11,900 minus several outflows related to operating is net cash 
provided by operating activities of 6,780. It's called net cash provided because it's an overall inflow. If the outflows had been greater than the cash received from customers, it would have been called net cash used by operating activities. So just change the language a little bit there. Our next major category is understanding the cash impact of any investing activities. Investing activities relate to either the cash impact of long-term assets. So if you're buying, paying out cash related to buying land, maybe a building or equipment, it would show it as an outflow here. If you're selling any of those long-term assets, it would show up as an inflow. The only transaction that impacts our long-term assets is our payment for our office equipment. So we here have here on the 26. So we'll show cash paid for equipment, Again, this is an outflow from Graham's perspective, so it'll show as a negative or an outflow, 1,860. That's the only transaction that is investment related from Graham's perspective. And again, we're gonna call this net cash used because it's an outflow by investing activities and an outflow of $1,860. The last major category of activities is financing. A business finances one of two major ways, either through long-term debt, so this could include cash flow from borrowing. So if you go to the bank and get a loan, it would be an inflow. Paying that loan back would be an outflow. The other major one is any cash exchanges with our stockholders. So if you receive cash as an investment from a stockholder, it'd be an inflow. If you pay out a return in the term of dividends to your stockholders, it would be an outflow under financing. So Graham Company has two transactions related to financing. No long-term debt impact at this point, but two stock related. They have cash received from their shareholder of 44,000. So that would be an inflow from Graham. And they also have an outflow on the 31st, cash paid in the form of a dividend to their shareholder of 1,800. Again, from Graham's perspective, they're paying out cash. So we'll show that as a negative 1,800. We'll net these against each other, 44,000 minus 1,800 is net cash provided by financing activities because the inflow is greater than the outflow of 42,200. Now we wanna add up all these individual activities, 6,780 inflow from operating, 1,860 outflow from investing, inflow from financing of 42,200 for a net increase of cash of 47,120. Add that to our beginning balance of zero because we just started business and we explain the change in cash balance to an ending balance of May 31st of 47,120. And again, we provide insight of how we're either receiving or spending cash. And this is pretty typical of what we'd expect for a new business. Quite a bit of that cash received was from a direct inflow from our shareholders. Operating was fairly limited. It was still positive. That's something we would probably expect to start to see larger amounts in the future as we gain more clientele. Well, that's our last financial statement and we wrapped up this problem.